dear subscribers and viewers. Here is another ancient enigma known as the American Stonehenge, but I would not call it a henge but the ruins of a dry stack stone chamber that is missing its roof. Although it is not megalithic the sheer number of these stone chambers and walls across New England make it a megalithic enigma in my eyes. I have personally seen some of these stone walls in the state of Virginia. America's Stonehenge is an archaeological site consisting of a number of large rocks and stone structures scattered around roughly 30 acres within the town of Salem, New Hampshire. A number of hypotheses exist as to the origin and purpose of the structures. One viewpoint is a mixture of land use practices of local farmers in the 18th and 19th centuries and construction of structures by owner William Goodwin in the 1930s. Other claims that the site has pre-Columbian European origins are regarded as controversial, possibly pseudo-archaeological, or the result of an early 20th century hoax. Among structures at the site are 11 standing stones that may have been erected to align with astronomical events. Archaeologist David Starbuck has said that it is widely believed that Goodwin may have created much of what is visible at the site today. The site was first dubbed Mystery Hill by William Goodwin, an insurance executive who purchased the area in 1937. This was the official name of the site until 1982, when it was renamed America Stonehenge, a term point in a news article in the early 1960s, in an effort to separate it from roadside oddity sites and reinforce the idea that it is an ancient archaeological site. Although the area is named after the archaeological site of Stonehenge in England, there is believed to be no cultural connection between the two. The site's history is muddled partly because of the activities of William Goodwin, who became convinced that the location was proved that Irish monks, the Cooldees, had lived there long before the time of Christopher Columbus, a concept he sought to publicize. The site has been altered by stone quarrying and by the efforts of Goodwin and others to move the stones to what they considered their original locations, with Goodwin perhaps responsible for much of what can now be seen. Many of the stones have post-1830s drill marks from the quarrying that took place on the site. Proponents of a pre-Columbian, yet non-Native American, origin for the site argue that there are similarities between the ruins and Phoenician architecture, and say that marks on some stones resemble some ancient writing systems of the old world. The late Barry Fell, a marine biologist from Harvard University and amateur epigrapher, claimed that inscriptions at the site represented markings in Ogham, Phoenician and Iberian scripts, which he also called Iberian Punic. Artifacts found on the site led archaeologists to the conclusion that the stones were actually assembled for a variety of reasons by local farmers in the 18th and 19th centuries. For example, a much discussed sacrificial stone which contains grooves that some say channeled blood closely resembles lye leaching stones found on many old farms that were used to extract lye from wood ashes, the first step in the manufacture of soap. Carbon dating of charcoal pits at the site provided dates from 2000 BC to 173 BC, when the area was populated by ancestors of current Native Americans. In archaeological chronology, this places indigenous use of the site into either the late archaic or the early woodland time periods. In 1982, David Stewart Smith, director of restoration at Mystery Hill, conducted an excavation of a megalith found in situ in a stone quarry to the north of the main site. His research team, under the supervision of the New Hampshire state archaeologist, excavated the quarry site, discovering hundreds of chips and flakes from the stone. Both the state archaeologist and Dr. Stuart Smith concurred that this was evidence of indigenous tool manufacture, consistent with Native American lithic techniques, although no date could be ascertained. Archaeologist Clive Runnell stated that if you've got a Bronze Age site in, say, Great Britain, near Stonehenge, you're going to find pottery, tools, evidence of burials, and hearths, and that no Bronze Age artifacts have been found there, in fact, no one has found a single artifact of European origin from that period anywhere in the New World yet. But the reason why no one has found anything is because no extensive excavation has been done around Mystery Hill and the other many stone chambers, and these stone walls found from Virginia to New York State, which are on private property. 
Most of the time archaeological finds are found by accident, so it could just be a matter of time but then again many sites are being destroyed. As someone studying landscape architecture this could be another research project of mine, to map out these sites with GIS and remote sensing tools to find out if these sites need historical preservation. I do agree that Goodwin has altered the original site. The lintel stone would not have been propped up like it is showed in the image. And the foundation stones seem clearly designed for a chamber. Also most of the site would have been barred with at least a foot of soil. Goodwin most likely did stumbled upon the site which is why he dubbed it Mystery Hill and tried to reconstruct it. His belief that there is a European connection is not that far-fetched. There is a theory for this type of migration called Solutrian. The problem is most archaeologists are not connecting the other sites to this site. We know the Vikings came to Nova Scotia, who's to say other Vikings or pre-Celtic cultures could not get to New England. Goodwin would not have known the details of the connection to Europe. For example maybe if it was built by a pre-Celtic culture and they may have interacted with the Native American mound cultures for hundreds of years, does that make them still European? If we take in account the number of these stone walls after filtering out modern walls going back to the settlers, then they must have been living in the East Coast for centuries but their population might have been limited compared that to their European ancestors. Possibly they had wars with the Mississippian Empire and were limited to the east of the Appalachians. They might have lost to the Native Americans and some went back to Europe. Camping in a cabin with my family near these stone walls, I spoke with the owner of the land who was telling me the walls have always been there but they have been trying to maintain them. He said all the big boulders are underground a couple of feet people in the area and even the national parks men I talked to thought they could be Native American or built by the settlers. Some walls are clearly due to farm clearing judging by the context of the wall but others are so eroded and partially buried. It seems a lot of these walls are random and don't fit a particular function so they could be more ceremonial. Today New Englanders are keeping the tradition alive by restoring and making new walls for aesthetic and functional reasons. I would not rule out the possibility that these orbs of light we call UFOs and the Celtics called fairies could create random enigmas in the landscape as a way of testing us in the future. This could be especially true with some of the standing stone circles found in Europe. Just as these fairy orbs might have a hand in some of these crop circles which we then replicate as a cultural response. So too could these fairy orbs have moved stones in the past and placed them in random ways that simply get us to questions such as the dolmens found from Europe to Korea. This could be how deep and discreet they interact with us, but they make sure there is no way we can prove it for they might want it left up to one's belief. This same psychological behavior is being played out every time they put on a light show in the sky, and we question is it us or them? To learn more about these stone chambers and wall see the video Secrets of the Stones by YouTuber Oracle Tracker. I'll leave a link. Let us know if you found any enigmas in the landscape. The origin of some of the earliest inhabitants of the Americas is shrouded in mystery. What we find about 13,500 years ago is a sudden explosion of what is called the Clovis, Clovis culture. Clovis were able to make some very sophisticated um, spear and arrowheads that allowed them to hunt very big game like mammoths. But the really big question is that we don't know where the Clovis people came from. What we find when we looked at other arrowheads and spearheads around the world is that in Asia, which is where we think um, Native Americans originated from, there is no such technology. There was nothing that looked anything like a Clovis arrowhead. On the other hand, if we go all the way to Spain and France, we can actually find some arrowheads that resemble to some extent what we find in the Clovis culture. And so there are big, two big competing ideas of where Clovis might have come from. On one hand, they might be part of the Asian wave that colonized the Americas when the ice sheets melted and they simply invented a technology that was quite similar to what had previously been created in Europe. On the other hand, it might actually be that some very enterprising Salutrians, that's the name of the people that made those arrowheads in Spain, 
were able to cross the Atlantic over the frozen ice sheets that were present during the last glaciation and somehow managed to make this incredible journey across the ocean all the way to the Americas and then flourished and literally took over the North American continent for several thousand years. And the veils of them you will find 